Hello YouTube. I want to talk today about improving the overall antenna efficiency with my radio installation and also some of my attempts to mitigate ignition noise. Just to provide a real quick overview for those who haven't seen my previous videos, I'll link some of them in the video's description below. Currently I have set up an SG7500 NMO, that's the 2 meter 440 antenna here on a trunk lift mount, and also a uh, 20 meter hamstick currently, I also have a hamstick for 40 meters, connected to a, I guess it's an SO239 truck lift mount with an adapter. Inside I have an IC706 MK2G, I don't know if that's pronounced Mark 2G or they actually say MK2G. Beneath the passenger seat I have the MFJ929 which is a recent acquisition replacing an LDG Z100 Plus. Uh, you can barely make out there if you can see the heat sink. That's the uh, IC706. And then I have a uh, capacitive matcher from MFJ, the 909, to help with the 40 meter antenna matching. The uh, tuner and radio have ground straps connecting them to the body. I found a, a bolt underneath the seat that I can connect them to. As a result of some of my attempts to mitigate ignition noise, my ignition noise is not bad. It really doesn't seem to affect me on the HF bands primarily, although there might be a little bit of ignition noise noticeable, uh, maybe at 10 meters. It's very slight. It basically just increases the, the noise level slightly, but you can't actually hear, you cannot actually hear the ignition. I'm going to give you an example of some ignition noise issues I still have. Ignition noise tends to be most noticeable on AM. Now the car is off and I have WWV at 10 megahertz coming in pretty well. That's with the car off. And that's with the car off. Ever so slight, you can hear it, but barely. Barely. However, on the airband, it's very noticeable. It's also slightly noticeable on at VHF FM, but only only sometimes and only on some frequencies. This is uh, the weather frequency. Seventy-nine. Junction mostly sunny. Seventy-three. And you can Stand barely hear it in the background. Corpus Christi partly sunny. Eighty-four. Houston partly sunny. Eighty. Once again at Austin Briggs from airport it was seventy-seven. Because this is an older vehicle, it's a nineteen eighty-eight. Acura Legend. I probably have managed to avoid some of the problems people have with more electronically sophisticated and technologically sophisticated cars. However, this car still has an ignition system. After reading some forums online, uh, someone had suggested using these ferrite beads on every single antenna connection, which I've done here, as you can see. On This is a V6, so there's three here, and there's three back here and everyone went to the main coil there. That probably hasn't done anything noticeable. I can't tell that this has made any impact at limiting the electrical noise. However, let's see if I can get it in here. The fan, when it comes on, I noticed my noise level increased noticeably. So I added several of these ferrite beads to the power cable to the fan there's probably a good four or five of them on the lead. And I think that actually did make a noticeable improvement. As I understand it, part of improving the grounding efficiency and overall efficiency of your antenna system, as well as helping in reducing ignition noise, is adding grounding straps or bonding the panels of the car together. So in this case, I bonded the hood to the uh, vehicle body there, as you can see. I just have this sort of quarter inch wide grounding strap. 
and I ran a couple of leads there. I just wrapped it around the bolt and wrapped them around the bolts holding that device into the firewall. Again, can't really tell that I've benefited from that, but I don't really have any tools for measuring grounding impedance or antenna impedance. It may have made an improvement that I'm not able to measure. I don't believe it had any effect on the noise level. For antenna feed point grounding, I've done what many say to do, and that's add grounding straps to the trunk lip mount there. Have a couple here running to a screw on the trunk lid. This isn't even metal. It's like a caulk that's painted over. These screws are supposed to sort of dig in to the metal, but there's really not any metal here for them to dig into. So I believe adding these grounding straps is important. I've done the same thing to the two meter, 70 centimeter antenna. I don't believe it's actually as necessary here. This is supposed to be a radioless antenna that doesn't need a grounding system. I think it's some sort of dipole configuration, at least from what I've been able to gather online. But for safe measure, I added the grounding strap. And also for safe measure, I've added a grounding strap to the antenna hinge over to the body. I just screwed it into one of the speaker bolts or wrapped it around one of the speaker bolts. I may add another one, but so far that's how it's set up. Okay, and then the tailpipe of the car. I added a grounding strap or two grounding straps there. I took a Dremel with a grinder bit and ground off the rust and corrosion off this metal pipe. There's a rubber grommet that that goes around. So apparently the ground, the exhaust system doesn't make a very effective ground. So I connected a couple of ground straps to the body. This modification has actually made, I believe, a noticeable difference. I think the uh, ignition noise on HF has definitely decreased since I've done this. Apparently the exhaust system, the exhaust pipe makes a very effective antenna at broadcasting ignition noise from the engine. So grounding it minimizes that. I would like to add some additional ground straps further down the ignition pipe, but it's quite difficult to get under there. So this was the easiest thing I could do right here since it's easily accessible. So far, I'm pretty pleased with the result of this, this bonding effort. If anybody watching has any experience with mobile HF, grounding and ignition noise i'd certainly be happy to entertain any opinions or suggestions you might have uh, so far this has been working well i think really the number one next step i need to make is replacing these antenna wires i don't know how old they are they came with the car when i bought it so that's probably my next step find some i don't know if they call them resistive core or just noise mitigating antenna wires. Okay, thanks for watching YouTube, and this is Remington H, and I'll say 7-3.